Well, hello, good people. It's your boy, Johnny J. Come with me on another epic photo adventure where I share all my tips for photographing this dramatic seascape. My name's Johnny Spencer, Johnny J for short, and I'm a landscape and nature photographer for the National Park Service here in Australia, who I've been working for for over 24 years. I have a real passion for being out in nature with the camera, and I've decided that I wanna share all that photography experience that I've learned over many years of trial and error with as many photographers as possible. Well, good morning, and uh, we're out doing it again. Another photography vlog, and uh, this time we're at a local beach called One Mile, and I've got an idea to walk down to this cool headland, and uh, the cool thing about it is we're getting some cloud. There has predicted some cloud. We've had a few showers of rain, so there's definitely cloud around. So fingers crossed, fingers crossed, this one comes together. Anyway, let's get down there, get set up, find a comp. Wow, look at this little fella. Look at this, this is a ghost crab. Quite a big one, actually. Ooh, hey, little fella. Hey, little buddy. You usually don't see them much during the day, but they come out at night doing their feeding. Sorry, mate. All right, we'll let you be. Well, we're on site. We made it after about half an hour, 45 minute walk. A bit of a clam around the headland and we are here. But basically I'm standing on one headland and then we've got a beach and then another headland and then the sun. So I think it might be like a pretty cool composition. I've been having a little look around. There's some nice lichen around, some nice little native plants for the foreground. And there's also some epic water movement. The waves are crashing in. I feel like we've got a big blocker behind me. You can see it's all the way to the horizon. But there is a little gap there and the gap is moving away from me so meaning the gap is getting closer to that horizon line over time so time check i think what is it now it is 5 a.m and sun and something biting me a mozzie or something go away mate far out little buddy Jeez, the mozzies are fierce this morning but um yeah about half an hour to sunrise but not sure not sure what's going to happen there's the fairly cloud around, 80% sort of cloud, high cloud cover. If we get a gap, it's actually gonna go off its chops. We're gonna get amazing light, but you know, nothing's guaranteed here with mother nature in control. We're just out here, we're doing it. It's a beautiful day and I'm just happy to be alive and being out here, it's just amazing. So one thing I like to do before I even do anything is actually have a walk around with my camera off the tripod, just to have a look and get a bit of a sense of what I can see. So I think for this, I'm gonna go with my wide angle. So my 16 to 35 on my full frame camera. And uh, let's just have a walk around here and see what we can see. So we're finally set up here. Things are looking really, really good. Something that's important when you've got your back or your side to the ocean is always keep an eye out on those waves. You just never know if you're gonna get a rogue wave come and collect you. One thing that is in my favor here, it doesn't get wet here very often. It hasn't been wet in here recently. Um, the tide is coming in, but so it means the swell is gonna get closer. But um, yeah, anyway, just a safety precaution when you're on the rocks like this, just keep an eye out because you never know when that rogue wave might come and get you wet or worst case what knock you off the rock so that could be uh pretty dangerous anyway let's look at this composition all right so this is what we've got i think this is going to be pretty nice we've got the sun rising up over here we've got this beautiful lichen like and subscribe <laughs> anyway that's a really bad dad joke but i'm a dad i'm allowed to make those jokes but um beautiful nice lichen down here in the left corner and then the idea was to get a bit of height i want a separation between here and a little bit between there 
and uh, that's why I've sort of come down like this and to get this bit of height and you can see this rock is sort of I've shaped it inside of this right foreground rock so that's really really important for this and then sky wires at the back I'll just underexpose a little bit there you can see we've got the beach running along there and some epic drama in the clouds I think time check we are well it's literally sunrise in the next 10 minutes so we're right on time here. Oh, you can see now, you can see once that water washes in, look at all that beautiful water movement down there as well. Here comes this wave, beautiful. So really looking for some of that water movement there in the foreground, but um, you can see we've got the leading line on the beach and there's actually another headland up over here. It's a lot smaller in the frame because I have got that wide angle lens on. But uh, all in all, that is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy where things are at the moment. Yeah, I think this is looking good. I'm really happy with the composition so far. I think going into portrait orientation, I played around with landscape and portrait orientation. Damn, mozzies. Should have brought some mozzie spray, some mosquitoes. I should, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. We call them mozzies here in Australia, but um, definitely should have brought some mozzie spray. But um, portrait orientation, I think, looks, looks, looks ace. I'm loving where that's at, so. If you're enjoying this video and you want to learn more about landscape and nature photography, I want to share everything I know with you. So I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. It's just like following on other social media channels and there'll be more videos like this one coming your way every week. Thank you in advance. All right, so we're after sunrise now and uh, there's a beautiful texture coming in the cloud. Unfortunately, the, the sun's been blocked. There is a little gap over there. So I do have a tiny little bit of hope that we might get some light. But I'm not worried. Look, there's beautiful texture up there now. The sky is looking really, really, it's looking okay. It's nice. There's clouds. So, hey, you've got to be happy about that. But the first thing we need to do, look over here on the back of the camera, is uh, you can see my focus point here, about a third into the scene, on that top of that foreground rock there. And I'm just going to uh, take a couple of shots at that. And let's play that back. And the first thing I want to do always is just check my focus. So. Foreground rock <clears throat> looks nice and sharp there, looking good. Midground rock, nice and sharp. And background all the way out there, nice and sharp. So at F11, focusing in a third there, we've got nice sharpness right throughout our frame. So that's cool. Now, exposure wise, I'm looking for that one third, one fourth, one fifth, because I want to get that nice water movement there. And I think, I think what's going to happen is we're going to get it in one shot. Because the cloud's acting like a massive softbox right now, and uh, really holding back that sun, it uh, makes it easier as a photographer because you can get everything all in one exposure. So that's really cool. Bring on that. <laughs> it makes your life easier in post too. Don't have to blend anything, don't have to merge anything. It's, um, yeah, it makes it really, really nice. So I've got my continuous shutter on. We're at F11, 1 4th, ISO 100, and I'm just waiting for these waves, just taking these continuous shots of these waves come in. And uh, I'll play a couple of those back there when they ride to the card. And I just want to double check. Let's have a look here. Yeah, no blinkies. Yeah, that's good. No blinkies. Cool. So play that back so we get it back in portrait. And I'm just looking at that water movement now. Let's have a look in there. Oh, yeah. I'm liking that. You can see that water movement there. Nice texture. You could argue maybe a longer exposure would also work here because we've got the, sh the rough texture of the rocks. But... You know, I'm, today I'm going to go with this sort of uh, medium sort of shutter speed and just get that little bit of water movement. I think that's what I'm after and that's what I'm liking. So let's get a few shots like that as these waves come in. And if you've seen my videos before, you know I like continuous shooting mode because I can get a lot, a range of shots as those uh, waves are moving through. Get those different textures, which I really, really like. Yeah, I'm liking that. It's really cool. All right, let's just zoom in here and have another look around. Yeah, nice, there's some lovely texture there. I'm loving that movement there. So you know what, I'm gonna go down to a third. And this will be the thing, you know, I can probably even up my f-stop just a little bit more. I don't like pushing my f-stop much past like f11, f14. Getting up into f16 and that, you start to get something that's called diffraction. Um, and it's, it, it, it reduces the quality of your photographs. So particularly the sharpness. So. You know, it's not a big deal. It's, it's, it's a big deal if you're printing them, but it also, you know, it's just, I try and get the best image quality I can when I'm out here. That's something I like to look out for. So gone down to one third now, so a little bit slower shutter speed and bump the aperture up to compensate for that. So let's just keep shooting here, waiting for another wave to come in. We've got a little one now. Oh, that was a good one. I sort of like the ones that aren't too big and uh, 
because they, they they leave they're not washing over the rock totally so if you see like this one look at this look how interesting the water is in this one yeah i really like that look at that water movement really interesting i'm loving that at a third see that's interesting look at that cool the main thing i've got to do now is just watch my exposure because as that sun gets up things are going to get lighter like i said i've probably got aperture I could probably go up a little bit more and trying to keep that around that third shutter speed I think is is what I'm liking at the moment so yeah all in all things are looking pretty good I really love the contrast that's what sets off the, these rocks and something I didn't mention earlier compositionally is I really love the contrast between the rocks and the water so we've got those dark reddy colored rock the white colored foam washing it in the water and the yellow beach back there so all in all looking pretty cool all right Mr. Swell show me the money <laughs> You can see what I mean now. If you look at the back of the camera, a big wave just washed in. It's not as pleasing. There's just that much white water moving around. I think I like the smaller ones. It creates more interesting little bits of texture here and there rather than just a, a complete white out of that area. But anyway, it's purely personal preference and it is a creative choice which way you want to go with that. Remember, the other thing I can do also if I really want to like merge different ones together, I haven't, I'm locked down on a tripod. I haven't moved my composition. So I can always blend different bits of this photograph together if that's something I feel like I need in the final one. So, but at this stage, you know, we're getting a few little ones here that I'm liking, so it's looking really good. It's so nice to get back out and finally uh, shoot some local stuff for myself. It's um, just awesome. I just love being out in nature. And this liking is just amazing. Like and subscribe. <laughs> All right, good people, that's it for the field work part. Stick around because I've got some post-processing tips and I'll show you how I put this one together. All right, I'll see you soon. All right, good people, let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you where, what we ended up with, which photographs I chose. So if you have a look here, here's the two photographs I did choose. You can see I really love the water movement here in this one. You can see that lichen there in the foreground. Just awesome, just amazing. So I really love that. And here's the second one. I chose it for this area here. So we took those over to Photoshop. And in Photoshop, we merged those two together there. Just simple layers and masks, guys. It's really, really simple. I'll do it for you while we're talking. So I've just got the layer underneath that I want to be my base layer, the other layer on top here. All I'm gonna do is go down here and add a layer mask at the bottom here, and then I hit Command-I or Control-I if you're on Windows, Command-I on the Mac. That's just gonna invert that mask and make it black, okay? Then I'm gonna hit the B key for a brush, okay? Then I want that opacity around that 40, 50%, and I wanna paint a white brush here, you can see, on a black mask, okay? And then all we're gonna do is just brush in that area, brush in that area, and if you, it's a bit slow, you know, you can turn that opacity up a bit more, bring in some of that area you wanna merge in. And because we haven't moved anywhere, you know, all this beautiful texture is just brought back into the scene. You can see there, really, really cool. Fills in that area, and I love that movement there. And I'm just clicking and dragging along, bringing in that beautiful texture there. And, it's as easy as that. There's before, after, before, after. And you can simply just bring in areas back into your scene that you like. So with just a few extra adjustments here in Photoshop, here's what we ended up with. Lovely, dramatic seascape scene. Here's the final photograph here with just a couple of extra tweaks in Lightroom. You can see I brought up the shadows a little bit in the end and did a few things. But I also created this black and white version, which I think really is cool as well. So added lots of drama there to the black and white, brought that lichen out. And I think the black and white looks really cool too. So I can't decide color or black and white, color or black and white. But honestly, I am really happy I got to get out there and super stoked with the result. It was just amazing. All right, good people, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. It's another epic photo adventure, such a fun one. And I'm gonna put this location in the bag because I reckon if we get a cracking sunrise there one day, this location is gonna absolutely go off. But I'm still really happy with the final photograph. And I think I'm leaning towards the black and white. Anyway, I'd love to know what you think. Drop a comment below, let me know color or black and white, which one do you prefer? And if you're enjoying these videos, give me a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate that too. That shows your support and it gets the word out there about these videos as well, which is really important to me because one of my goals as a landscape and nature photographer is to share my knowledge with as many other photographers as possible. So, you know, sharing this video and giving me a lot really helps. And uh, check out this video here if you're into more landscape and photography tips, you'll enjoy that one as well. It's another fun photo adventure. And as always, stay inspired, keep creating, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.